Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 10, Episode 9, Abs and Jabs. All right, buckle up everybody. We are picking up exactly where we left off. Danielle sauntering up behind Margaret and grabbing her ponytail and yanking it. Because, you know, I just can't help myself. I just can't. Urgh. Maybe a psychiatrist can help you. Okay, well, can I just say this? Steve and Dan looks worried. <laughs> I don't think he fully understood what was going to happen in his boutique. In any case, after she yanks her hair, Margaret, like, head goes down and she gets away from her. And everyone's like, oh my God, Teresa. Okay, let's get out of here and takes Danielle by the hand and they go outside and Danielle's like, yes! What? Do you really feel triumphant? And Teresa, you're back in the wrong horse. I can't imagine that you are not gonna regret your decision to be team Danielle, ride or die. Or you guys deserve each other, I haven't decided yet. And by the way, the producer stepped in because she really had a hold of Margaret's hair and she wasn't letting go. She was really kind of dragging Margaret toward her. Melissa, Jackie, Jennifer, I mean, nobody can believe that Teresa left with her. Meanwhile, like I said, she's out there celebrating on the street and then she goes, is Troutmouth following us? Teresa's like, no, nobody's behind us. So they turn into like this little alley to hide. It's so bizarre. And she's like, Siri, call Marty. And she's telling him, Margaret poured water all over me. Oh, why'd she do that? Marty's an idiot. Have I mentioned that? And then Danielle's story is, I was sitting calmly and telling her, you should stay out of my relationship. Okay. <laughs> yeah. First of all, you weren't even sitting, but calmly... Yeah, that's not an understatement. That would be a big fat lie. You were in her face aggressively. You were walking toward her. You got an inch away from her face. You know Marty's gonna believe her too though. Duh, well, duh. That's not right. Meanwhile, still inside the boutique, the other ladies are like calming down. Melissa's cleaning up a little bit. And Margaret's like, can you believe she pulled my ponytail? Jennifer's like, she is unstable. Yeah. Then Jennifer said, let the two crazies stay together. Okay, I'm not sure if she's talking about Danielle and Marty or Danielle and Teresa. Because in my opinion, either one applies. So outside in the alleyway with Marty on FaceTime, Teresa's like, I told her I had your backs the whole time. Marty's like, uh, thank you, Teresa. Then Teresa tells Danielle that she's got to go back inside and, you know, say goodbye to the ladies. And she's like, oh, really? And she goes, I have to because I brought everybody together. <laughs> oh, yeah. You are just bringing people together, Teresa. Oh, this conversation in the boutique with Teresa and the other ladies, this is interesting to me because they are calling her out on how delusional she's being about Danielle. Let me go back to the beginning. Teresa walks back into the store and a couple of the ladies are going, Teresa, why did you even follow her out there? And she's like, I know, I'm sorry. And she says to Margaret, are you okay? And she's like, she pulled my hair, Teresa. I know that was not good, but like, well, I, why didn't you throw water on her? Everyone's going, are you kidding me? She assaulted her. She touched her. She put her hands on her. And then Dolores, I'm so happy, said, yeah. And then she grabbed her purse and damaged everything inside. That was her retaliation for the water. What was the hair pulling about? Teresa, I'm old school Italian. In Jackie's confessional, she said, pulling someone's hair is not old school Italian. It's psychotic. But what Teresa says is, nobody would throw red wine at me and get the away with it. And Margaret goes, are you talking about Cabo? 
that was last season. She's acting like the hair pulling was justified because of the red wine toss. Wow. Jennifer's like, Teresa, that was then. This is now. You got to wake up and see that she put her hands on her. That's not okay. That's psychotic. Teresa, I know that, but you basically assaulted her with the water. You know, this is the point where if I were there, I would be like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm not, I am clearly not going to be getting through to this person. So Teresa's like, I'm defending my friend. Jennifer said, actually, I'm surprised Jennifer's sticking up for Margaret so much. Jennifer said, Teresa, why don't you defend this friend? Meaning Margaret. And Margaret said, you know what, Teresa, can't you just ever be my friend? And Teresa said, I'm not trying to hurt you. But Margaret's had enough. She's like, I, I, I can't. The fact that you would defend that crazy person is just, it's too much. So Margaret leaves and Teresa goes after her and she's like, Margaret, Margaret, I don't want you to be upset. Margaret's a mess. She is like seriously crying hard now. She cannot understand why Teresa would defend Danielle. Eventually she gives her an ultimatum. You're either my friend or you're hers. And Teresa goes, oh, come on. Are you really gonna make me make that choice? And she said, yes, because she's crazy. She leaves and they say goodbye. I get that it's a TV show, but if I'm Margaret, I don't care about Teresa being my friend or not. I'll be friends with Melissa and Dolores, Jennifer and Jackie. I don't need Teresa. <laughs> this isn't funny, but the editing is funny. Margaret is in the car and she calls her husband, Joe. And he's like, what's wrong? And she goes, it, it's fine. I'm not going to cry. And he goes, what happened? And she goes, okay, maybe I'm going to cry. It was sweet and heartbreaking. But anyway, inside, Teresa walks back in there and they're like, what's going on? And she goes, she's like hysterical crying. And Jennifer goes, so let me ask you, Teresa, are you seeing Margaret that upset? Does that have any effect on you? And she's like, of course, I don't like to see her there upset. I don't want anybody crying, but it's like, she's like, she's like a dog with a bone. And as soon as, they, <laughs> as soon as she hears dog with a bone, like, I don't know if she was looking at her phone or whatever, but Dolores is like, excuse me now, <laughs> did I hear somebody say my line? Dog with a bone? Yeah, dog with a bone. I'm surprised they're not showing Jackie. So Melissa's like, okay, you two are never gonna agree or see eye to eye. But it's Dolores in her confessional that I think hits the nail on the head. She said, I know exactly what Teresa is thinking. She's thinking if somebody threw water on me, I would have punched them on the spot. And Dolores said, I would have done the same thing. So I know that's what she's thinking, but what she doesn't understand is when you're in that blind rage, you cannot put your hands on somebody. But I think she makes a really good point. I think that is a lot of what is happening in Teresa's head. I think there's a part of her that thinks Danielle's behavior is acceptable because she would have done it. So they're ready to go. And Teresa's like, listen, I hope you guys had a good time. And Melissa goes, oh yeah, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> Next we're at Teresa's house and no, no, oh, my no, no just got out of the hospital for five days with pneumonia. So he's weak and his legs are weak and I don't like it, of course. But Dolores is coming over and they're having a little chat in the kitchen. It's interesting. Dolores' take on that phone call with Joe when she was uh, prom dress shopping with Gia. You and I talked about it a lot in the comments last week. And I just, I find Dolores' take kind of interesting. Teresa was telling her, you know, what happened and that Joe was just really getting on her last nerve about the money thing because she paid off all his debts and all the legal fees and cleaned up the mess he left for her. And so it was very annoying to her that he's going to complain about her spending money. And she said, and you know, that happened in front of Gia. And Dolores said, oh, and was Gia mad at him? And Teresa goes, 
No, of course not. Daddy's little girl. She, it was me. She takes everything out on me. Dolores said, you know, I don't think it was the worst thing in the world for her to see you stand up for yourself in front of him. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but I think it's an interesting take. For the most part, I cannot stand that they talked about it in front of her. I blame them both for many, many, many things. But that bothered me because... If I were Teresa, I would have taken that phone and gone to the other end of the store and said, listen, I'm not doing this in front of Gia, but you and I both know what's going on with the money situation. You know how when somebody is really good at their job, the boss always ends up piling more on them because they're the ones they can rely on? This is happening to Gia. I think it's a little dangerous. She's the eldest child She's mature, she's stepping in and taking care of her younger sisters. She's a huge help for Teresa. I promise you she was probably a huge help for Joe when Teresa was in prison. And she has just taken on this role where she has to be mature beyond her years. And there, Teresa now, I guess, is relying on her more and more heavily because she just, it seems like whatever you throw at her, she takes it and handles it well. But that's a dangerous thing to do, man. She's only 18, and it is going to manifest itself in some way, shape, or form at some point in her life. I wish her the very, very best, but you know, people can only take so much. And she is only 18. That's very, very young. Ooh, then Dolores says, hey, does that prenup work for your benefit too? Because the way he's talking, he's making it sound like, uh, if God forbid things don't work out with you two, yeah, God forbid, uh, <laughs> that he just, you know, he might be looking to take some of your money. And Teresa goes, I have no idea. <laughs> of course she doesn't. Dolores is like, yeah, well, I would look into that very carefully. Okay, so then we cut over to Melissa and Joe's house. And you guys, I have never been attracted to Joe Gorga until now. <laughs> a little bit okay so i think it's because i like that there's gray in his beard i'm kind of attracted to that but it might have been the way he was just listening to his wife and he wasn't being obnoxious and he wasn't being stupid and sexual he was just like listening to her he was even like mm, yeah I don't know, when they were talking about his sister and Danielle, and I just, I was a little mesmerized during this scene. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> so weird. But anyway, the gist of that whole scene was that Envy is going to start carrying a men's line. And she's prepping everything for the Envy fashion show. And she was telling him that she got little Frankie Catania. And then, of course, we see little Frankie and he's, you know, shirtless and muscle bound. But like, this is what I mean. I kept waiting for Joe to say, oh, why don't, aren't you going to have me model something in your show? But he didn't. He was just like, oh, that's good. That's nice. It was very different. I liked it. Now we cut over to Margaret and Joe's house. Margaret's in bed and he's got something on her neck. I guess she went to the doctor and the doctor said she has whiplash. I mean, I guess it's possible. Honest to God, she got yanked back. We saw that. In any case, she's in bed, no makeup, and I love it. I mean, just a few weeks ago, she had sunglasses on in the house because she didn't have her lashes on. And now she's filming like that, and I love it. I'm proud of her. I'm envious of her confidence. So um, she's just really disappointed in Teresa, and Joe's like, listen, if Teresa won't give up Danielle, you can't be around Teresa anymore. And Margaret's like, oh, for sure. We keep flip-flopping around to everybody's house. We're back at Teresa's house with her conversation with Dolores. And Dolores is like, so listen, I'm worried about your relationship with Margaret because you took Danielle's side and I don't want Margaret to be mad at you. And Teresa goes, that's ridiculous. Margaret's a big girl. She can stick up for herself. Oh, and Danielle can't? I don't remember Danielle having any trouble sticking up for herself either, Teresa. 
So she's like mad that Margaret gave her an ultimatum. And she's like, who does that? I don't tell her who to be friends with. Then we're back with Melissa and Joe. And Joe's like, I don't know what's wrong with my sister hanging around that Danielle. I don't get it. He's kind of blaming her whole situation and that her head's just not on straight because of everything that's going on with Joe. And, you know, she's just not thinking straight. Okay, I mean, that doesn't really explain why she is siding with Danielle over Margaret. Melissa's like, I just hope she's smart enough to apologize to Margaret because Margaret is not happy right now. She's worried about her fashion show turning into World War III. Not unlike Kim D's fashion shows. (laughs) Wasn't it after Kim D's fashion show that Jacqueline's daughter, Ashley, yanked hair extensions out of Danielle's head? Remember that? Danielle wasn't too happy about that. We have a little throwaway scene with Jackie giving her kids a healthy snack of yogurt and fruit. She says she was inspired by her visit with her dad and that she was just mostly very sorry that that happened in front of her kids. Uh, yeah. That was so bad. So now Teresa and her brother Joe are going shopping for pool furniture. And while they're there, he asks her what's going on. What's going on with Danielle? Why are you sticking up for this woman? I heard Margaret got her head yanked back real hard. Well, Margaret poured water on her first. What about the fact that Danielle already retaliated for that by taking Margaret's purse, unzipping it, dumping the contents into a burning candle, and then, you know, smashing the candles and smashing everything into her, the stuff in her purse? What about that? I don't know if this is going to get said or not, but I happened to see a tweet from Jackie saying that they spent hours getting candle wax out of her sunglasses and like everything in her purse was covered in it. I mean, that was pretty good retaliation for pouring water, don't you think? So explain her yanking her ponytail. Like I said last week, this was premeditated. This was not a a reaction to the water. Like for example, and this wouldn't be right either, but if Margaret poured water over her head and then turned around and Danielle just grabbed her hair and yanked her. But this had to be 10 minutes later. So anyway, back to pool furniture shopping. Teresa said, everyone's judging Danielle and it's not fair. And he goes, they're not judging her. It's happening right now. It happened to Margaret. It happened to Dolores. Even Jennifer. Are you going to wait until she comes after you? And Teresa said, yeah. Yeah. So Joe said, you know what I think? I think that uh, when you go to the fashion show, you you should go talk to Margaret. Teresa, "Eh, well, maybe I will. Or maybe I'll just throw some wine in her face. And she picks up a glass there in the store, and she goes, maybe I'll just be like, oh, you want to tell me who I can be friends with and who I can't? Okay, bitch. Nobody tells me who to be friends with. Capiche? And Joe's like, oh. Okay, maybe you don't do that. Oh boy, fashion show is going to go great. I just feel it. So it's the day of the fashion show and Melissa's getting everybody ready. Frankie is walking in it. And so she's talking to all the models and uh, showing them how she wants them to do things. So proud of herself for being a boss lady in front of her daughter. And then she gets up and twerks, you know. It's a little bit of a give and take with Melissa. Then my attraction for Joe Gorga fades rapidly when he said, Oh, need any help getting your dress on, Melissa? Okay. There he is. (laughs) At Teresa's house, she and the girls are getting ready. Joe calls yet again. Oh, God. Will you accept a call from Joe? If I never have to hear that again, it will be too soon. And then, ugh, this is ugly. Teresa's like, maybe don't be mean to me next time. How was I mean to you? I don't remember that. Okay. Finally, he said, well, maybe if you didn't bring up things that happened 23 years ago. Gia is coaching Teresa, mouthing to her that she should just say, okay, I'll try and work on that and keep my mouth shut. And ugh, it's kind of ugly. I really don't like how that went down. 
Then we check in with Jennifer and Bill, and she's uh, wearing a Chanel skirt, and I think it's Chanel. I don't know my designers, but she's so loyal to Chanel that I'm assuming it is. Then we're at Dolores' house, and Frank's like, oh, Dolores, I don't know if I should be even going to this. She's like, yes, Frank, of course, you always go. And your son is walking in this show, so you have every right to be there. Oh, okay. And then she tells him that she heard that he's going to be wearing a bathing suit. And he goes, oh, like a, a ball hugger? And she's like, no, you know Frankie couldn't fit into a ball hugger. And they laugh hysterically. Ick. Are they joking about the size of their son's balls? Wow. Very, very interesting parenting choices on these shows. Let me just say that. Okay, we check in with Margaret and Joe. Margaret's deciding between two dresses. Joe said, well, as long as all the girls are covered. All the girls? Are there more than two? <laughs> oh, back to Teresa's house. Teresa gives Gia a very challenging puzzle. Okay, let's say you have two friends. I'm not going to name their names, but like, let's say one of them threw red wine on you and water. Gia stops her. So Margaret and Danielle. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, God. That was a real brain teaser. <laughs> All right. So uh, not the best episode for Gia unfortunately. But first of all, Teresa, stop bouncing things off of your daughter. It's you and your friends. Deal with it or go to another friend and talk about it or go to another adult and talk about it, not your daughter. She's asking her, like, what would you do? And basically, Gia says that she would do the same thing because she's got a short temper too. So please, Gia, don't tell me you're on Danielle's side. I don't really think you are, but I, I don't know. It's just don't involve Gia in this. How about that? Um, back at the Aiden's house, Jennifer is telling Bill the story. And she said, I just feel like Teresa should have more compassion for Margaret. And it's just that I feel like if I say what I feel to Teresa, then she'll think I'm not taking her side, and I don't want that. Mm, no, of course not. That might mean you're not on next season, right? You know, it was the one thing that I admired about season one Jackie, is that she went after the big fish. She went after Teresa when nobody else would. But Jennifer, yeah, I don't like, that's the part of Jennifer I'm not loving. And Bill's advice is, you should be able to tell her how you feel because Danielle took it to another level of physicality. Good point. All right, everyone is starting to arrive at the fashion show. Jennifer and Bill get there. Dolores and Frank come. Uh, Jennifer is surprised that it's Frank and not David. Yes, David is at sniper school. Okay, I don't know if someone's after him or <laughs> if there's a particular reason for it, but yeah. And then Margaret and Joe come in. Sorry, Joe, but the girls are out. All of them. This is very strange. Dolores gives a big hug to Joe Benigno. She has just a real affection for him. And Margaret's like, I know. Do you see this? They love each other. But Dolores says, oh, I'm sorry. I just can't help it, Frank. Uh, why not? Frank? Why would Frank care if you were attracted to Joe? Just wondering. Seemed like a little slip there. Anyway, Margaret is asking the guys, did you hear about what happened to me with Danielle? I went to the doctor. He did x-rays. I have whiplash. And they're like, oh, my God. Frank Sr., never turn your back on a stripper. Is that a saying? <laughs> I always thought that strippers had a heart of gold. Maybe I've seen too many movies, but, like, I always felt like strippers were really just trying to get food on the table and keep their families together. Uh, Margaret's telling everybody that will listen about this story. And now Jackie and Evan come up and she's telling Jackie, to tell you the truth, I'm a little embarrassed about it because of the way Teresa behaved. So Jackie said, yeah, you should probably talk to her. And she's like, I'm going to be honest with you. Teresa needs to come and talk to me. 
Dolores gave a look like, ooh, that's not going to happen. But yeah, Teresa did not have Margaret's back and she does need to talk to Margaret. Margaret didn't do anything to her. So anyway, now Teresa comes walking in with Melania and Gia. All I'm going to say right now is uh, please don't have anything go down in front of the girls. Just do one thing right. Well, um, Margaret says hello to Gia and Melania, but she and Teresa don't even look at each other. In Jennifer's confessional, she's like, come on, come on, Teresa, say something. Say anything. She wants Teresa also to make up with Margaret. So she says, come on, let's go get a drink to Teresa. So Jennifer and Teresa go to the bar and Dolores comes up to the bar too and she orders tequila and they're teasing her about that. But did you guys see her purse? She has like a sequin clutch with R-H-O-N-J on it. <laughs> oh, I want one. Kinda, not really. <laughs> If you are a housewife of New Jersey, I do think it's kind of cute. So Jennifer says to Teresa, we just got done talking to Marge and just so you know, she expects you to come talk to her tonight. I guess she just wants to know that you feel bad for what happened to her. Teresa, uh, well, I didn't do it. Is that my fault that something happened to her? And Dolores goes, no, you didn't do it, but I think she just feels very upset. And Jennifer said, she feels like you're picking Danielle over her, which, I mean, she is. What Teresa says is, well, she asked me to pick a side, and when somebody asks me to pick a side, it doesn't usually go very well for them. Teresa's just getting more and more angry. She's like, you know what pisses me off? This is my sister-in-law's event, and she expects me to go up and talk to her. If she wants to talk to me, she can come up and talk to me. Yeah, you care so much about your sister-in-law's event. <laughs> Come on. So Dolores, who has known Teresa for 20 years, said, yeah, I know this tone in Teresa's voice. It is not good. So uh, it's time to exit the area. So she says, I'm going to go check on Frankie, and she leaves. So when Dolores goes to where the models are, she runs into Melissa and she fills her in on what's going on. And right away, Melissa's like, oh, okay. So Teresa is not in the mood to talk to her tonight. And she's like, no. Meanwhile, Jackie goes to find Margaret and she tells her not to hold her breath because Teresa is not going to apologize to her or come to her. Over at the bar still is Jennifer and Teresa. Jennifer, who hasn't known her for 20 years, doesn't know that the signs are all pointing to leave this alone. She keeps kind of pressing her about talking to Margaret. Teresa tells her, I don't go to people, people come to me. And she said, if she has something to say to me, I'm right here, she can come and say it to my face. Oh, but you guys, Jennifer screws something up in such a monumentally bad way. What Margaret had said earlier was, I'm embarrassed because Teresa didn't choose me, she chose Danielle. But that's not what Jennifer said. Right now to Teresa, she said, well, Margaret said that you were an embarrassment. Mm-hmm. Because you sided with Danielle and not her. So Jennifer says to Teresa, you know, Danielle putting her hands on Margaret, that really crossed a line. And Teresa goes, should she have put her hands on her? No, that was wrong. Jennifer's like, maybe you should just tell Margaret that you acknowledge that part of it. Teresa, how dare you tell me I need to go up to her. Jennifer is shocked because she has turned her rage onto Jennifer. And Teresa, she poured water all over Danielle's head. That's an embarrassment. Didn't you tell her that? And Jennifer's like, I, I didn't think the water was that big of a deal. It was just water. Teresa, are you kidding me? She picks up a glass and she goes, is this water? And she's like, yeah, yeah, it is. Throws it on Jennifer's skirt. Mm-hmm. Remember the Chanel skirt from earlier? And Jennifer's like, oh my God, I cannot believe you just did that to me. Teresa's like, did you like that? No, I didn't like that. Yeah, see? And then she takes the glass and throws it like, I don't know, at the bar across the room. It crashes out of control. It's only water. Oh, you are nasty. 
So uh, Teresa says she's trying to prove a point. In Jennifer's confessional, she's like, at what point was she trying to prove? She poured water all over me, but you don't see me pulling her hair. And yeah, she has chosen not to be angry with Teresa. Wow. Now I want to know what Teresa has on you, Jennifer. Do you really think Teresa controls that much of this show that if you get on her bad side, you're out? Honestly, I'm starting to feel like if that's the way these housewife shows are going to go, I don't know if I can hang with them anymore. That isn't fun for me. That who's ever been on, you know, the longest, the OG, controls everything and everybody else. And even though we change up the cast and, and oftentimes we need to change up the cast, oh, well, if you're a new girl, too bad because you are going to get hazed and you do not dare cross the OGs. I'm not signed up for that. You know what we need is a new franchise with Teresa, Vicky, Tamra, Ramona. Who else is, is bitchy and mean to the new girls? Who else of these OGs? I don't know, but like they all need to be on a cast together. Let's get all the alphas together and have them destroy each other. Let's see who the last one standing in that group is. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be Teresa. <laughs> Okay, so then it was time for the fashion show. They go sit down and, I mean, I guess it was okay. Frankie was cute. All Everybody was, I mean, all the models were beautiful. Teresa was trying to say, like, when a model would come out, is he hot? And Gia's like, I don't know, he's okay. And then when Frankie came out, Gia was like, he's so hot. So, I mean, this probably comes later, but you guys might already know this. I know they go to her prom together, but I didn't know if they were just going as friends or if they were actually dating. I don't know. She does seem attracted to him, though. And she's adorable, so maybe they are. Anyway, um, so everything goes fine. After the show, Jennifer and Jackie go to find Melissa and congratulate her. And she asks if Margaret and Teresa are talking. And Jennifer's like, oh, no. And she's like, your crazy sister-in-law threw water on me. And they were like, what? And she goes, mm-hmm. And she's like, I know she was just trying to prove a point, but I didn't pull her hair. So then we check back in with Margaret, and she's like, we're out of here. Teresa is obviously not going to come and talk to me, and I'm not going to wait around. I will call Melissa tomorrow and congratulate her. She and Joe leave. So there is not going to be a confrontation between them at the fashion show. So now Melissa and Teresa see each other for the first time and she's like, oh, did you like the show? Yeah, it was great. Wait a second, did you throw water on Jennifer? Yeah, I did. Melissa, why? Cause you know what? I was pissed off. Your fucking friend Margaret? You know what she said? She said, I was an embarrassment. She didn't. Jennifer screwed that up, but this is probably going to be a sticking point for the whole rest of the season. Anyway, it's, you know, embarrassed. I'm not an embarrassment. She's an embarrassment. And Melissa's like, oh, okay, here we go. She can kiss my fucking asshole. So she's heading off and Melissa's like, stop, be a nice person. Teresa turns back. I'm always nice, unless you fuck with me. We get a final, oh dear Jesus from Melissa. And that is where this episode ends.